In this theory video, we are going to look at diatonic intervals, part two. To recap, diatonic intervals are the ways in which we map the distance between two notes. The relationship is measured from the lowest note to the highest note. There are five types of diatonic intervals. Major intervals, perfect intervals, minor intervals, augmented intervals, and diminished intervals. In the first video, we looked at the first three categories of intervals. In this video, we will look at the final two categories of intervals. Interval type four, augmented intervals. The word augment means to make bigger. So when it comes to augmented intervals, we are making major and perfect intervals bigger. We achieve this by sharpening the top note of a major or a perfect interval. There are eight augmented intervals. An augmented unison, the top note of a perfect unison is sharpened. An augmented second, the top note of a major second is sharpened. An augmented third, the top note of a major third is sharpened. Augmented fourth, the top note of a perfect fourth is sharpened. Augmented fifth, the top note of a perfect fifth is sharpened. Augmented sixth, the top note of a major sixth is sharpened. Augmented seventh, the top note of a major seventh is sharpened. And augmented octave, the top note of a perfect octave is sharpened. Question, write an augmented unison. Step one is to work out a perfect unison interval, or by repeating the tonic note twice. So a perfect unison is G to G. Step two is to sharpen the top note of the perfect unison interval to create an augmented unison interval. So we sharpen the G and it becomes G sharp. So an augmented unison above G is G sharp. And step three is you place the notes next to each other on the stave and use accidentals to identify the difference between the natural and the sharp note. So it looks like this. Question, write an augmented second interval. Step one, work out a major second interval. So we go from the first note of the G major scale to the second note of the G major scale. So a major second interval is G to A. Step two is we sharpen the top note of the major second interval to create an augmented second interval. So A becomes A sharp. So an augmented second above G is A sharp. And step three is we stack the notes on top of each other on the stave, so it looks like this. Question, if we write an augmented third interval, step one is to work out a major third interval. So we're using G again. We go from the first note of the G major scale to the third note of the G major scale. So a major third interval is G to B. Step two is we sharpen the top note of the major third interval to create the augmented third interval. So B becomes B sharp, and an augmented third above G is B sharp. And step three is stack the notes on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. If we write an augmented fourth interval, step one is we need to work out a perfect fourth interval. So using G again, we go from the first note of the G major scale to the fourth note of the G major scale. So a perfect fourth interval is G to C. Step two is we sharpen the top note of the perfect fourth to create an augmented fourth. So C becomes C sharp. And our augmented fourth interval is G to C sharp. And then step three is we stack the notes on top of each other on the stave so that they look like this. To write an augmented fifth interval, step one is we need to work out a perfect fifth interval. So we go from the first note of our G major scale to our fifth note of our G major scale. So a perfect fifth interval is G to D. Step two is we sharpen the top note of the perfect fifth interval to create an augmented fifth interval. So D becomes D sharp and our augmented fifth above G is D sharp. Stack the notes on top of each other in the stave to look like this, and we've got our answer. You can see a pattern emerging. To write an augmented sixth interval, we first need to work out a major sixth interval. So we go from the first note of our major scale, which is G, 
to the sixth note of our major scale, which is E. So a major sixth is G to E. Step two is we sharpen the top note of the major sixth interval to create an augmented sixth interval. So E becomes E sharp, and our augmented sixth interval is G to E sharp. Step three is we stack the notes on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. To write an augmented seventh interval, we first need to work out the major seventh interval. So we go from the first note of our G major scale, which is G, to the seventh note of our G major scale, which is F sharp. So our major seventh interval is G to F sharp. Now we need to sharpen the top note of the major seventh interval to create an augmented seventh interval. So when we sharpen an F sharp, it becomes an F double sharp. So an augmented seventh above G is F double sharp. And then step three is that we stack the notes on top of each other in the stave. Remember, when you sharpen a note that is already sharp, it becomes a double sharp. And the double sharp symbol is an X. To write an augmented octave, you first need to work out a perfect octave. So, we go from our first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the eighth note of the G major scale, which is G. So a perfect octave is G to G. To make this an augmented octave, we need to sharpen the top note of the perfect octave. So the top G becomes G sharp, and our augmented octave is G to G sharp. And final step is we stack the notes on top of each other on the stave so that they look like this. This method always works. And this time we're going to use D as the tonic to prove the point. There's our D major scale. So a perfect unison is D repeated twice. An augmented unison is we sharpen one of the Ds and we end up with a D and a D in sharp. And you place them next to each other on the stave, remembering to use the accidentals to show that one is D and one is D sharp. So a major second interval would be D to the second note, which is E. And we place them on the stave like this. To make an augmented second interval, we sharpen the top note of the major second. So we go from D to E sharp and we place them on the stave so it looks like this. For an augmented third, we first need to work out a major third, so we go from the first note, which is D, to the third note of the major scale, which is F sharp, and stack them on the stave like this. To make an augmented third, we need to sharpen the top note of the major third, so F sharp needs to become F double sharp. Remember, that's the symbol is an X. And on the stave, it looks like this. An augmented fourth, we first need to work out the perfect fourth. So we go from the first note of the D major scale to the fourth note of the D major scale, D to G, and we place them on the stave like this. To augment the fourth, we sharpen the top note of the perfect fourth, which becomes a G sharp. So we place the D and the G sharp on the stave, so they look like this. To create a augmented fifth, we first need to work out a perfect fifth interval. So we go from the first note of the D major scale to the fifth note of the D major scale and stack them on top of each other in the stave, so they look like this. To make an augmented fifth, we sharpen the A, which was the top note of the perfect fifth, and we place them on the stave, so they look like this. To create an augmented sixth, we first need to work out a major sixth interval. From the, we go from the first note of the D major scale to the sixth note, D to B, and we place them on the stave. To augment the sixth, we sharpen the top note of the major sixth, so B becomes B sharp, and we place them on the stave, or we stack them on the stave, so they look like this. To create an augmented seventh, we first need to write a major seventh. So we go from the first note of the D major scale to the seventh note of the D major scale, and we stack them on top of each other on the stave. To create an augmented seventh, we sharpen the seventh note of the scale, or the top note of the major seven, so C sharp becomes C double sharp and we stack them on top of each other in the stave so they look like this. And finally, to create an augmented octave, we first need to write out a perfect octave. We go from the first note of the scale to the eighth note in the scale and we stack them on top of each other. To create the augmented octave, 
We sharpen the top note of a perfect octave, so D becomes D sharp, and then we stack them on top of each other so that they look like this. You can apply this method to create any augmented interval from any major or perfect interval in any key. Interval type 5. Diminished intervals. To create a diminished interval, you flatten the top note of minor and perfect intervals. The word diminish means to make smaller. So when it comes to diminished intervals, we are making minor and perfect intervals smaller. We achieve this by flattening the top note of a minor or a perfect interval. There are eight diminished intervals. A diminished unison, where you flatten the top note of a perfect unison. A diminished second, where you flatten the top note of a minor second interval. Diminished third, where you flatten the top note of a minor third interval. Diminished fourth, where you flatten the top note of a perfect fourth interval. Diminished fifth, where you flatten the top note of a perfect fifth interval. Diminished sixth, where you flatten the top note of a minor sixth interval. Diminished seventh, where you flatten the top note of a minor seventh interval. And a diminished octave, where you flatten the top note of a perfect octave. Write a diminished unison. Step one is we need to work out a perfect unison where we repeat the tonic note twice. In this sample, we're going to use G major, so a perfect unison is G to G. Step two, we flatten the top note of a perfect unison interval to create a diminished unison interval, so the second G becomes G flat. And step three is we stack these notes on top of each other. Actually, with a unison, we place the two Gs next to each other and we use a natural sign and a flat sign to show that one note is supposed to be G natural and one note is supposed to be G flat. To write a diminished second interval, step one is we need to work out a major second interval. Using G as our basis, we work out a major second, which is the first, which is G, to the second, which is A. So a major second interval is G to A. Step two is we convert that to a minor interval by flattening the top note of the major second interval, so A becomes A flat. So a minor second is G to A flat. Step three is we flatten the top note of the minor second interval to create the diminished second interval. A flat becomes A double flat, and we have a diminished second which is G to A double flat. Step four is we stack these notes on top of each other on the stave, so it looks like this. So a four step process. To write a diminished third interval, step one is we work out a major third interval. So once again with G, we go from the first note of the G major scale to the third note of the G major scale, which is B. And we have a major third interval, G to B. Step two is we convert this to a minor third interval by flattening the top note of the major third interval. So B becomes B flat, and our minor third is G to B flat. Step three is we flatten the top note of the minor third interval to create the diminished third interval. So the B flat becomes B double flat. And our diminished third is G to B double flat. And step four is we stack the notes on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. This is also a four step process. To write a diminished fourth interval, step one is we need to work out a perfect fourth interval. So. We go from the first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the fourth note of the G major scale, which is C, and our perfect fourth interval is G to C. Step two is we need to create a diminished fourth interval by flattening the top note of the perfect fourth. So C becomes C flat, and our diminished fourth is now G to C flat. And step three, we stack these notes on top of each other in the stave, so they look like this. It's a three-step process. To write a diminished fifth interval, step one is we work out a perfect fifth interval. So we go from the first note of our G major scale, which is G, to the fifth note of our G major scale, which is D. So our perfect fifth interval is G to D. Step two is we create a diminished fifth interval by flattening the top note of the perfect fifth interval. D becomes D flat. So our diminished fifth is G to D flat. And step three is we stack the notes up to on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. It's a three-step process. To write a diminished sixth interval, we first work out a major sixth interval. So, we go from the first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the sixth note of the G major scale, which is E. 
So our major sixth interval is G to E. Step two is we convert this to a minor sixth interval by flattening the top note of the major sixth interval. So E becomes E flat. And our minor sixth interval is G to E flat. Step three is we flatten the top note of our minor sixth interval to create the diminished sixth interval. So E flat becomes E double flat. And our diminished sixth is G to E double flat. And step four, we stack these notes on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. It's a four step process. To write a diminished seventh interval, step one is we need to work out a major seventh interval. So we go from the first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the seventh note of the G major scale, which is F sharp. So our major seven is G to F sharp. Step two is we convert this to a minor interval by flattening the top note of the major interval. So F sharp becomes F, and our minor seventh interval is G to F. Step three is we flatten the top note of our minor seventh interval to create the diminished seventh interval. So F becomes F flat, and our diminished seventh interval is G to F flat. And step four is we stack these notes on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. It's a four step process. To write a diminished octave, we first need to start out by writing out a perfect octave. So we go from the first note of the G major scale, which is G, to the eighth note of the G major scale, which is G. A perfect octave interval is G to G. Step two is we flatten the top note of the perfect octave to create the diminished octave. So the top G becomes G flat, and our diminished octave is G to G flat. And step three is we stack the notes on top of each other in the stave so that they look like this. It's just a three-step process. This method always works. And this time we're going to use D as the tonic to prove it. So, a did perfect unison first is repeating the tonic note twice. And we put it on the stage so it looks like this. To create a diminished unison, we flatten the second D and we place it on the stave so that it looks like this. Remember to use the natural and the flat accidental. To create a diminished second, we first need to create a major second, which is the first note, D, to the second note in the scale, which is E. We then convert that to a minor second interval by flattening the top note of the major interval. So E becomes E flat. To create a diminished second interval, we need to flatten the top note of the minor second interval. So E flat becomes E double flat. And then we place it on the stave so it looks like this. To create a diminished third, we first need to create a major third interval, which is the first note, which is D, to the third note in the major scale, which is F sharp. We then convert this to a minor third interval by flattening the top note of the major third, which F sharp becomes an F. Then we convert this to a diminished third interval by flattening the top note of the minor third, which is the F, it becomes an F flat, and then we place that on the stave, so it looks like this. To create a diminished fourth, we first need to create a perfect fourth interval. We go from the first note of the D major scale, which is D, to the fourth note of the D major scale, which is G, and it looks like this on the stave. To create a diminished fourth, we flatten the top note of the perfect fourth interval, so G becomes G flat, and then we place it on the stave, so it looks like this. To create a diminished fifth interval, we first need to create a perfect fifth interval. We go from the first note of the D major scale, which is D, to the fifth note, which is A, and we place them on the stage so they look like this. To create a diminished fifth interval, we flatten the top note of the perfect fifth, so A becomes A flat. We place that on the stave so it looks like this. To create a diminished sixth interval, we first need to create a major sixth interval. So the first note, which is D, to the 6th note, which is B. Once we have that, we convert that to a minor 6th interval by flattening this, the top note of the major 6. B becomes B flat. Once we have that minor 6th interval, we create a diminished 6th interval by flattening the top note of the minor 6th again. So B flat becomes B double flat. And we place that on the stave so it looks like this. To create a diminished 7th interval, we first create a major 7th interval. So D to the seventh note of the major scale, which is C sharp. 
We then convert this to a minor seventh interval by flattening the top note of the major seventh interval. C sharp becomes C. We now convert this to the diminished seventh interval by flattening the top note of the minor seventh interval. So C becomes C flat. And then we place it on the stave so it looks like this. Finally, to create a diminished octave, we first need to create a perfect octave. So we go from the first note of the D major scale to the eighth note of the D major scale. We place it on the stage so it looks like this. To create a diminished octave, we take the eighth note of the scale and we flatten it, and D becomes D flat. And then we place those two notes on the stave so that it looks like this. In summary, to create diminished intervals from major intervals, you need to flatten the top note of the major interval twice. The first time you flatten the top note of the major interval, you change it to a minor interval. The second time you flatten the note, you are making it smaller again, therefore turning it into a diminished interval. To create a diminished interval from a perfect interval, you flatten the top note of the perfect interval once. This is because perfect intervals do not have li minor little brothers or sisters, so to make them smaller, you only need to flatten the top note once. And that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and now you can understand how diminished and augmented intervals are created. Thanks for watching.